This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you this day as we gather to hear the word of our Savior and and we welcome our visitors that are worshiping with us today to hear the word of our Savior. This fifth Sunday after the epiphany of our Lord, we see Jesus as true God who's come in human flesh, but also true God who's come to preach, to proclaim the good news of the gospel so that that word of life might go forth to every nation. And uh, we remember that also as God's calling to his church of of every age to preach the word of life. The order of service we'll follow today is found on page 184 in your hymnals, and we begin with hymn 398. We rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, 
beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice, because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. to God on high and In the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. may be seated. <clears throat> the Old Testament lesson appointed for the fifth Sunday after the epiphany of our Lord is from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in? Who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness? Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them. And they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name. By the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love to us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. The epistle lesson is recorded in the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians. And this also is our text for this day. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But not of my own will, I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. 
to those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I, be I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable so I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I, may, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll speak together our learn by heart that's found inside the back cover of your bulletins this week. As St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, he saved us by the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Titus 3, 5 through 8 in our Sunday school memory verse for today, my help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121, two, we rise. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. And immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, <clears throat> and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation 
came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. From 1 Corinthians 9 Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who keep, competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So far, the text. You know, St. Paul uses a lot, of, a lot of sports metaphors in our epistle lessons. In our text, Paul is likening the, the Christian life to the disciplined life of a runner, later the, a boxer also training the, their bodies, constantly focused on the goal whose preparation makes him or her stronger and better prepared to win the prize. Now, it's important always to remember God's victory doesn't come by any work of ours. It's the gift of God's grace to the undeserving for Jesus' sake. Those who wait for the Lord, Isaiah says, will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not be faint. So our salvation is, is a gift of God's free grace who renews the strength of the weary ones. 
and that prize that Jesus won for us and, and gives to us by his grace alone sets us on our journey to be with him in heaven. And God calls us during this journey to lives of godly discipline and perseverance. We rest in Jesus through faith, trusting in him, but God calls us in our daily lives in the here and now to get to work, to be busy serving him and doing the good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. Paul says every athlete exercises self-control to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable. And sports are, are great, and Paul recognizes the, the value of them. Sports are great. Hard work is great. He's just saying, don't dedicate your life to things that have no eternal value. I mean, think about it, how hard it is even to remember the last, well, maybe, the last NBA champion or the last, or the last who won the last World Series or the last, maybe you'd do better with the football or you know, who knows who the last great Olympian was? Nobody can remember all of those things. There's always something new. And, and the old is, is constantly falling away. So it's as though he is telling us, therefore, don't make your life single-mindedly dedicated to perishable things. If you work hard for a perishable crown, it's a no-brainer that the far greater priority is to be with our Lord Christ in heaven for an eternity. So as God's people, we, Paul says in 1 Corinthians also, that whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. So that includes our sports, includes our jobs, our, our schooling. But there's so many kids that, that get straight A's or show incredible discipline and skill in, in sports. There are many adults who, who really work bone-wearyingly long and, and hard hours to earn perishable bread, but in their Christian lives exhibit no discipline at all. I mean, some may in the end leave great memorials to earthly achievements, yet as Christians manage to live in such a way that maybe everybody at the wake at the end of life would say, oh, I didn't know they were a Christian at all. Or maybe no evidence could be marshaled in court to convict them. Well, bodies are trained and, and honed by diet and exercise. Faith is, in a sense, also strengthened and honed by, by the diet of God's heavenly food, of the word and sacraments, God's word and his body and blood of our Lord Christ. But faith is, is starved when we aren't fed by God's good gifts. And some can practice for hours on end at their, at their given sport, whatever that is, or they can do homework until they pass out over their books at night. Or they can be workaholics at their job but some who strive for that perishable crown or those perishable crowns may give not five minutes to setting aside time for prayer or for hearing the word or reaching out to a neighbor in a Christian kindness and love. So sports are great teachers. If sports were, if they were intrinsically harmful, Paul wouldn't have used them to make his point. But for too many Let's be honest, it's more important that their kids are on every team than that their kids learn the Ten Commandments or that they learn the Creed. It's more important that they, they make every practice than make Sunday school or make it to confirmation class. More important that we do our jobs well than serve God from the heart in Christian lives of, of service. More important to us too often to win what are life's perishable crowns rather than God's crown of life. 
And that's a problem because it proves our priorities are a mess, that our God isn't the God who sent his son to save us, but so often it's the God of self, or it's the God of piling up trophies here on earth. Too often the perishable crowns are more important to us than the crown of glory. And for this, we must each repent our failures. Now understand this, that that God is the one who gives the gift of eternal life in Jesus, your Savior. Faith clings to Jesus' cross alone and rests in him unceasing. And by its fruits, true faith is known with love and hope increasing. For faith alone can justify works, serve our neighbor, and supply the proof that faith is living. You know, for some of us, it gets increasingly difficult to ever remember a day as we look at our bodies when we got some wonderful athletic performance out of our bodies when we were ever really competitive at anything. But if you kind of put yourself in Paul's analogy, you were joined to Jesus, to his death and resurrection and baptism. You're a winner already, and when Jesus gives you the final heavenly crowny one for you in heaven even more so. But God forbid, don't ever say, as some are wont to do, don't ever say, I'm saved, so I don't need to go to church or Bible class. I don't need to to love my wife. I don't need to care for my kids. I can be mean and and spiteful and selfish and, and tear others down with bitterness and hate. I mean, sometimes people who should know better think this way. Well, I believe in God, so I'll just live how I want. And I've got to get out of jail free anyway. I believe in Jesus, so I'm just going to do my thing. But a true faith rests, a faith that rests in Christ's death and his resurrection for me should move me into service and love for my neighbor to work hard living out our faith every day, to work hard as though our very place in heaven depended on that work, all the while knowing that it depends on nothing but Jesus and his work that secures our home. See, God hasn't placed you in your vocation as a, as a mom or dad, a husband, a wife, a son or daughter, a worker or a boss, a church member, a student, a friend. It's not by accident. God weaves the connections of your life and he gives you those around you in your church and in your community or on your team or in your school to be lights in a dark world. God calls you to share your faith and love to your neighbor. God calls you to be a a little Christ so that everyone who sees you can give thanks to God for your witness and for your part in their lives. May God give us the courage to live those disciplined lives of service. See, the epiphany season is about learning who this little baby that is born in Bethlehem is, that it's God who's come in human flesh. But it's also about what was his mission What is his mission to the end of days? It's the evangelism season of the church year in that sense. Notice in our gospel lesson, it's going great guns. Everybody's coming to the door all through the night to see Jesus and be healed. But Jesus said, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. He came to preach the gospel of God's kingdom and the breaking in of the kingdom of God, which was happening in his very person and work. The miracles were a part of that, but Jesus says, preaching is why I came. Paul said in our text, the necessity of preaching the gospel is laid on me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, Paul said. You know, in Paul's life, he worked tirelessly to build relationships with all kinds of people, meeting them where they were, whether they be people of the law or outside of God's law, whether they were weak or strong. 
he met them where they were so that he could bring them to the saving knowledge of Christ. That's not to say that Paul was a was two-faced or a deceiver, kind of car salesman, a little shady, how he's it's not what Paul's doing at all when he it's not comp that Paul compromised the truth, never. It's to say he didn't throw away people that weren't like him, but worked to bring them the truth of the gospel. And if you think about it, there's a pretty slim segment of people in our world today that grew up with a catechism under one arm and a Bible under the other and being marched by their parents into their old familiar pew every week. Some folks that we meet at the grocery store that we live next to, that we ride the school bus with, that we work with, have no knowledge of Christ or no accurate knowledge. These people are also precious to him. They must be precious to us also. And we can reject their wrong-headed beliefs and attitudes while still working to build a relationship of Christian care with the aim of sharing our hope in Jesus, with the aim of of inviting them along to church with the aim of witnessing to Christ when they're hurting and in need of the good news of a risen Savior. So that's how it is, I think. You're in, you're in Mount Calvary, you're in your house, you're in your school, your job, whatever it is. It's all for a reason and God's purpose. Your life is to reflect God's goodness and love in those places as his free grace flows into your life, it overflows your life to your neighbor. So don't be careless about it. We want that neighbor to share the crown of glory. And that might take an attitude change on our part to see others not for what they are or who they are, but as souls with an eternal destiny, as those for whom Jesus died. Paul encouraged a disciplined life so that we not be disqualified for the prize. God wants us to go in into training in a disciplined way to prepare ourselves, equip ourselves as the Holy Spirit, I should say, equips us through his word. And today is a day that God wants us to let the word of Christ be on our lips as we serve our neighbor, as we work for the glory of God. And prayer is a starting place. Jesus withdrew, went away to pray, and then said, I'm going out to preach. So we pray, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Pray that the dollars that you put in the offering plates, that they'll extend God's kingdom in this place that they'll help to reach our young people, that they'll help our preschool families to hear the word of life and be saved. Pray our gifts for God's work in Kenya, our gifts that can be used to bring others to know our Lord Jesus. Pray that God give you the courage to speak the truth, to share boldly, and and pray that the Holy Spirit will always, because he's the only one that can, will make those words mighty. And, and work through his word. Run in such a way, Paul says, as to win the prize. Well, how should you run life's race? Trust in Jesus. Focus on him. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Live in the joy of his love and his free forgiveness. And pray that God give you every day the eyes to see your family, your neighbors, your friends, your teammates, your fellow workers to see them as God's children too, and and people worthy of sharing the good news of Christ and serving them with the love of Jesus. The race is won. It is finished. Jesus said so, and he doesn't lie. We just got to wait to the end until until we see that victory that is certainly ours in Jesus. But we know that even more than most sporting events, life can have some pretty deflating, debilitating endings. Because Jesus rose from the dead for you, you can find joy and peace, whether it be in life's victories or defeats. 
2 Corinthians 4, Paul said, These light and momentary troubles are achieving for you an everlasting glory that outweighs them all. Amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Create in me a free heart, O God, and renew spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy be seated as the offerings are received. remember, and, and also for those that are in undergoing treatment or rehab, we remember Joyce and Anita and Guy, for Rodney, for Julie and Steve, for Genevieve, for David, for Justin, and for Joe, who's, who is home now, Robert's mom, who is, is home now from the hospital and continuing to, to her recovery. For Dan and Mitch and Deb and Rebecca. For Leah's dad, who, who was in the hospital and now home and for strength in, in his recovery. For Terry and Bob and Ethan. For Mason and Otis. For, for my friend Sharon, who is having back and spine surgery this week. For Sharon and for Dave. For Aiden. For Gabe's nephew. And we also remember Nellie's dad, who is, is beginning cancer treatments for God's strength and, and healing for Nellie's dad. We rise.
We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh to preach the gospel and cast out the, the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could never overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you've laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that many would be saved in every nation and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Bless the saints in our own congregation and the congregation at St. Paul in Stover as they call a shepherd to lead them with your word. Strengthen all congregations that are in need of a pastor and continue to raise up faithful men who will serve in your harvest fields. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, give to every Christian home the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue in the end in the holy Christian faith ready to receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold sway over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land. Bless our farmers and fields. Preserve her produce and industry. And our leaders, together with our people, to be directed in the ways of justice and peace by your guiding hand. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us, that our lives be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, your Son is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demon, disease, and every ill must turn away. We bring before you our brothers and sisters in Christ that we've named this day, that you would be with them, that you encourage and comfort, and that if it be according to your good and perfect will, you restore and heal them here in time or with you in eternity. And we remember also those that are, are known and named only in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Holy Father, where there's forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. Bring us in faith to your holy sacrament that the blood of Christ, which atoned for our sin, may make us whole. Strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil. Turn us in love toward our neighbor and preserve us in body and soul to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right, so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, in him being found in the, in the substance of our mortal nature. You have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, 
evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. seated for a closing hymn.
A few announcements before we take our leave this day. Um, Rose has a note in there saying thank you for the evangelism. And I thank, thank Rose for a wonderful time after church last week for making our Valentine's cards and, and uh, preparing those. Everybody that helped out and, and for all the good food that chipped in there. So um, thank you from Rose, but also Rose, good job. That was very good. Randy, you want to say a word about whatever you like, actually, I guess. If you... <laughs> I want to thank everyone who attended the trivia night last night, as well as uh, everyone who helped with uh, providing snacks and treats. Um, overall, we made, uh, we cleared a little over $1,600, so thank you for that. We are... We are on our way towards our goal of 250000 by the end of the year, but we do have a long ways to go. So we ask for your continued support and helping uh, bring in support from the community as well. If you missed the trivia night last night, you missed out on a, on a really fun time. We had about 90 folks uh, there, and um, we, we had a lot of fun. So we are working on planning our next one. Uh, we do have a committee meeting again uh, next Sunday after church. So we will be planning our next trivia night as well as our next uh, fundraisers going forward. But once again, thank you to everyone who helped and everyone who showed up last night. Thank you. Oh, yes. Also, we have some leftover treats, uh, bake sale items that are out uh, in the entryway. So make sure you stop and uh, get some before you go home. And thank you for all the hard work you did finding all those good questions. So that was, was very well done. And everybody who chipped in there. We are... Next week, our confirmation class is going to Sunday. Now, we'll be done fairly early next week. I mean, I know what next week is, so we're aware of that. But we'll be shifting because our Wednesday evenings, Lent is coming very quickly. So you see that in your bulletin and the schedule there for, for the bulletin and for a theme for our pastor's rotation in, in the Lenten season that's coming up very quickly. If I could, Leah, would you mind, can you, can you sh shut the feed off for?